simple. The first is, what is the difference between CBD oil and cannabis? Is there a difference? Is it part of it? But there are a lot of people who see the CBD oil in the movie and as well in stores. So why is that legal? Well, CBD derived from hemp is legal, kind of, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> because legal. CBD is still considered Schedule 1. Yeah. And that's why it's, it's a great a gray kind of thing. So there, the hemp bill is, has passed, the farm bill has passed, and yes, hemp is legal, but the CBD in the hemp is still Schedule 1. So you have some areas of the country where people's products are being confiscated off the shelves Correct. based on Schedule 1. And, it's, it's, and our government is like really schizophrenic about how they enforce, when they enforce, that kind of thing. But the difference between CBD and cannabis is that CBD is part of cannabis or part of hemp. The hemp plant and the cannabis plant are in the same species, but hemp has very little THC. That is the compound that gets you high. Mm -hmm. But THC also has medicinal value too. So that's, that's the difference between CBD and um, the whole plant. <laughs> CBD is one of 150 cannabinoids in the cannabis plant. We've, we've discovered, I know that I think they said 80 in the film, but now it's, we've, they, they keep discovering more and more. It's like 150 cannabinoids in the cannabis plant. In the hemp plant, it's more like 10, more like 10. But there's also things like terpenes, which give the cannabis and hemp its aroma and flavor that have medicinal properties as well. And that's why the whole plant is better than just an isolate. CBD does do a lot of things, good things, but if you can get full spectrum CBD from the whole hemp plant or get it from the cannabis plant, it's a lot more potent. I mean, she's the queen of, of pot because the re <laughs> reason I say that <laughs> is because going back to what I said about, you know, you're used to saying, hey, you got any? You got any? And somebody has some, right? But now that we have studied this plant and this, the family of plants, and you see that there's so much that can be done with these plants and why it should be legal, but it's also overwhelming for new people coming into, you know, CBD, and, and I, have, I have new pain, so I need to, you know, treat that chronic pain, and I'd like to use this instead of, of an opioid. You know, what advice do you give someone who is just now realizing, I'd like to try this, but I don't even know where to start? You definitely want a clean source as best you can. I just learned at the, at the same conference that Cass went to. I mean, I, I saw it on, online, so I <laughs> wasn't quite there. But um, the highest accreditation for a lab these days is an ISO 17025 accreditation. And, uh, oh, that's your area. I know. I'll I'll let my I'll I'll let, okay, okay. Yo, so you want a clean source, I'll say that. But, and, it's, and there's not probably that many products on the market right now that fit that standard, but you want a, a product that's third party tested. Mm -hmm. So everything you're getting at the gas station or <laughs> the 7 of 11 may, yeah. it may not be that good. And, and uh, I saw a recent study where only 26% of the products on the shelf of CBD had CBD in it. That's correct. Only 26%. So you want a, you want to know your source. You want your company, a company that's third party tested. And CBD is a really, uh, it is a remarkable drug. I mean, uh, uh, or, or I'm sorry, plant, um, compound. <laughs> and um, it's, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it decreases inflammation. It, 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 it treats cancer in a multitude of ways. It has, works through at least 65 different metabolic pathways. It turns on 700 genes that fight cancer it turns off 500 genes that cause cancer. That's how amazing, just that one little cannabinoid, and the cannabis plant has 150 of them, you know? So it's like, it's, it's amazing. So, and, and please ad lib on that. I think it's real important to understand, we keep saying schedule one, but schedule one is the equivalent of a heroin or cocaine. And so that's saying that it has no medicinal benefits at all. So I don't wanna assume that our audience understands that Schedule one is really, really bad. <laughs> it's really, really bad. And I mean, the government has actually had drugs since 1985 that have the THC component in them. Specifically, the area that I worked in was in HIV. And they use, there's a drug called Marinol that was created specifically to help 
people get their appetites back for those who were wasting when it came to AIDS. And so understand that they know that it works. And they've known, yes, and so they know that it works, they know that it has worked, they try to space it out. Okay, so we have one in 1985, and then back in 2005, we had another drug that came out, um, Megas, which was specifically for cancer patients, HIV, anorexia. And so they know. Mm -hmm. They just wanted to create it synthetically so that they wouldn't have to say that it comes directly from the plant, but they created a synthetic THC9, the Delta THC9 specifically. And when we say we want things third party, I'm all about compliance. That is something I'm very passionate about because I understand that compliance goes directly to patient safety. It is directly making sure that the consumer is being taken care of. And though we want things third party tested and we want to make sure that there's a third party involved, we want to make sure that third party is reliable. Right. Because what we've learned over time is that these third parties are working with these farms and they're working with big pharma. And I can tell you I have lots of clients in the specialty pharmacy industry where we are dealing with all of the high-end drugs that are for disease states for hep C and Crohn's disease and MS. And so they want to keep us out of that space. They want to make sure that they're the only ones making the money. And so that's why we have all this pushback. It's not that the FDA and um, EPA, Department of Agriculture, they all know that it works. They just want to make sure that we're not benefiting from it. So in terms of using, you know, as a first time user, I can, I can give a little bit of advice on that just because I've only been using cannabis and CBD for about a year and a half. And that's because, like the filmmaker, I was a product of the D.A.R.E. generation. And it took me a long time to let go of, of that propaganda. And so in terms of finding CBD products that are trustworthy, you know, like Dr. Felicia was saying, there's a lot of products out there that are garbage. And so what you can do is use Google is awesome. So you can, you know, Google lists of best CBD products, and a lot of those uh, companies that are out there will have places where you can download the, the results of their testing. And if they don't have that, don't even bother That's with them. Right. Um, and if you ever get an occasion to be in a legal weed state and feel like you want to try it, um, I would say try a, different, a few different dispensaries and check out their bud tenders. Not every bud tender is the same. And you know, talk to them about what they recommend. You know, what's the most popular things out there, and and what the effect, the side effects are. Not side effects, but the effects. Do you get groggy and all that that stuff? So, take a trip, man. Check out these places, and <laughs> <laughs> not to sound like a stoner or anything, but <laughs> take a trip and and really get to talking to these people. The dispensaries are awesome out there in legal states. They're miles ahead of where we are here in Georgia. And to speak on how far they are ahead, uh, Des, um, Dustin Sulak is one of the leading uh, DOs, pain specialists in the nation. He is bringing dispensaries in legal states into HIPAA compliance. Mm -hmm. So when you're worried about your personal information, you know, that is such a strong move. I don't think that as, as public, you know, healthcare is concerned, I would, I'm so excited about these dispensaries being made HIPAA compliant. Mm -hmm. For as a patient, that makes me feel so much safer. I mean, I still have my card in Denver. So I move, you know, every time I go out there, I try to make sure I hit something up. But yeah, it's, it's, it's to see that happen, I can't wait for that to come to Georgia in a fully compliant industry. Okay, so, but the first question I wanna ask actually comes from the audience because we heard in the movie all about different states where it is now legal, but what is the status of Georgia? And one, uh, one participant today said, please look into your crystal ball. Will Georgia continue specifying one disease at a time who can use medical cannabis? Or will it become generally prescribed as a, pr uh, as a practitioner real needs it? And how long will there be, across the board, ability to prescribe it, again, here in the state of Georgia? And whoever wants to start talking, just get into your mic. Uh, uh, why don't you start casting out, and I'm going to give you <laughs> my tidbit on that. Um, you know, our current law, uh, we have a, a list of uh, uh, illnesses, and yes, it will expand as our citizens uh, if, as you go to your physicians, as, as you go ahead and you fill out the application to join and get a card. A med getting a medical card 
lets our, uh, our legislators know, I don't want to sit this on electrical equipment. I just thought about that, not a good choice. Uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, as the public, when you go to your physicians and you talk to them about needing CBD oil or cannabis and you get on the medical roads, that does increase the pressure for them to also uh, make our laws a little more aggressive and making sure that coverage for our patients is the number one concern as we develop legislation. Uh, right now, also, you're looking at pharmacies being a big, uh, a, a big part of the rollout you know, of cannabis dispensaries. So as you start, you know, I went to a big medical conference, Patients Out of Time, last week, and a lot of the uh, pharmacy community, they're learning dosing recommendations. And a lot of these dosing recommendations, which are awesome, a lot of the, uh, the stats are coming out of Israel, which I don't know if you guys do any research, but there is so much data on dosing and efficacy that is available, and what I'm seeing is pharmacies and companies and dispensaries as close to us as Florida are uniting with this data, with these companies, making the very strains that are being made in Israel in the states and available. So Georgia's really missing out on a very unique opportunity to properly medicate our citizens and to have some real in industry you know, um, um, access here. And we've de definitely, the two go hand in hand. As we develop the industry, our patients' needs will be met better. I predict that within two years, uh, cannabis will be legal on the federal level. Within two years, if we continue to vote and get the right Congress in there, within two years, it's gonna be legal. Um, now, my concern is for the state of Georgia because they don't necessarily have to reflect the legislation that's passed on the federal level. Right. It can be more conservative, like what we have right now. So it's so important to vote in every election, every runoff, so we can get people right. under the gold dome that look like us who are serving what we want, what our priorities are, not what corporate America wants, not what the pharmaceutical industry wants not what the law enforcement field wants, not what the religious work, and then I'm, you, I want everyone to, to, to praise God and if that's what you do, but I'm just saying. Ha happy Easter. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be crazy with the legislation, that's all I'm saying. So uh, yeah, I, ha I have my concerns about what's gonna happen in Georgia because we, we have got to get the right people under the gold dome to, to, to give us the legislation that reflects the rest of the country. We are so behind. So behind, and, and I want us to be like California where the, the doctor can write a prescription for it or a recommendation for it if they think it might help. It, it, I, not just eight or 12 or 16 conditions, because this plan can help so many things. It's, so it, yeah, I, I want the limitations to be- Say that <laughs> is because, going back to what I said about, you know, you're used to saying, hey, you got any? You got any? And somebody has some, right? But now that we have studied this plant and this, the family of plants, and you see that there's so much that can be done with these plants and why it should be legal, but it's also overwhelming for new people coming into you know, CBD, and, and I, have, I have new pain, so I need to you know, treat that chronic pain, and I'd like to use this instead of, of an opioid. You know, what advice do you give someone who is just now realizing, I'd like to try this, but I don't even know where to start? You definitely want a clean source as best you can. I just learned at the, at the same conference that Cass went to. I mean, I, I saw it on, online, so I wasn't <laughs> quite there. But um, the highest accreditation for a lab these days is an ISO 17025 accreditation. And, th oh, that's your area. I know. I'll I'll let my you I'll know. Okay, okay. Yo, so you want a clean source, I'll say that. But it's, yes. And there's not probably that many products on the market right now that fit that standard, but you want a, a product that's third party tested. Mm -hmm. So everything you're getting at the gas station or <laughs> the 7 of 11 may, yeah. it may not be that good. And, and uh, I saw a recent study where only 26% of the products on the shelf of CBD had CBD in it. That's right. That's right. Only 26%. So you want a, you want to know your source. You want your company, a company that's third party tested. And CBD is a really, uh, it is a remarkable drug. I mean, uh, or, or I'm sorry, plan, um, compound. <laughs> and um, 
it's we, yeah. I mean, it, it, it decreases inflammation. It, 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 it treats cancer in a multitude of ways. It has, works through at least 65 different metabolic pathways. It turns on 700 genes that fight cancer. It turns off 500 genes that cause cancer. That's how amazing just that one little cannabinoid. And the cannabis plant has 150 of them, you know? So it's like, it's, it's amazing. So, and, and please ad lib on that. I think it's real important to understand we keep saying Schedule 1, but Schedule 1 is the equivalent of a heroin or cocaine. And so that's saying that it has no medicinal benefits at all. So I don't want to assume that our audience understands that Schedule 1 is really, really bad. <laughs> it's really, really bad. And I mean, the government has actually have drugs since 1985 that have the THC component in them. Specifically, the area that I worked in was in HIV. And they use, there's a drug called Marinol that was created specifically to help people get their appetites back for those who were wasting when it came to AIDS. And so understand that they know that it works. And they've known, yes, and so they know that it works, they know that it has worked, they try to space it out. Okay, so we have one in 1985, and then back in 2005, we had another drug that came out, uh, Megas, which was specifically for cancer patients, HIV, anorexia. And so they know. Mm -hmm. They just wanted to create it synthetically so that they wouldn't have to say that it comes directly from the plant, but they created a synthetic THC9, the Delta THC9 specifically. And when we say we want things third party, I'm all about compliance. That is something I'm very passionate about because I understand that compliance goes directly to patient safety. It is directly making sure that the consumer is being taken care of. And though we want things third party tested and we want to make sure that there's a third party involved, we want to make sure that third party is reliable. Right. Because what we've learned over time is that these third parties are working with these farms and they're working with Big Pharma. And I can tell you I have lots of clients in the specialty pharmacy industry where we are dealing with all of the high-end drugs that are for disease states for hep C and Crohn's disease and MS. And so they want to keep us out of that space. They want to make sure that they're the only ones making the money. And so that's why we have all this pushback. It's not that the FDA and um, EPA, Department of Agriculture, they all know that it works. They just want to make sure that we're not benefiting from it. So in terms of using, you know, as a first time user, I can, I can give a little bit of advice on that just because I've only been using cannabis and CBD for about a year and a half. And that's because like the filmmaker, I was a product of the D.A.R.E. generation. And it took me a long time to let go of, of that propaganda. And so in terms of finding CBD products that are trustworthy, you know, like Dr. Felicia was saying, there's a lot of products out there that are garbage. And so what you can do is use Google is awesome. So you can, you know, Google lists of best CBD products, and a lot of those uh, companies that are out there will have places where you can download the, the results of their testing. Mm -hmm. And if they don't have that, don't even bother That's with them. Right. Um, and if you ever get an occasion to be in a legal weed state and feel like you want to try it, um, I would say try a, different, a few different dispensaries and check out their bud tenders. Not every bud tender is the same. And, you know, talk to them about what they recommend, you know, what's the most popular things out there and, and what the, effect, the side effects are. Not side effects, but the effects, do you get groggy and all that, that stuff. So take a trip, man. Check out these places and <laughs> not to sound like a stoner or anything, but <laughs> take a trip and, and really get to talking to these people. The dispensaries are awesome out there in legal states. They're miles ahead of where we are here in Georgia. And to speak on how far they are ahead, uh, Des, um, Dustin Sulak is one of the leading uh, DOs, pain specialists in the nation. He is bringing dispensaries in legal states into HIPAA compliance. Mm -hmm. So when you're worried about your personal information, you know, that is such a strong move. I don't think that as, as public, you know, healthcare is concerned, I would, I'm so excited about these dispensaries being made HIPAA compliant. Mm -hmm. For as a patient, that makes me feel so much safer. I mean, I still have my card in Denver. So I move, you know, every time I go out there, I try to make sure I hit something up. But, 
yeah, it's, it's, it's to see that happen, I can't wait for that to come to Georgia in a fully compliant industry. People just want to make sure they don't get hurt by taking it. I think, I mean, f again, fear is a powerful tool and somebody trying something new. And like you said, having to come out of that, you know, I grew up in the don't say no or just say no or, <laughs> sorry, I changed it around. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? See how I turned that around? Um, but yes, yeah, so people are coming out of that and so I think they're fearful and of and it. And, and, and uh, there's three categories of people who I think should be very careful about trying on that trip to the West Coast. Um, and <laughs> yeah, and you want, if you're going to do that, you know, you want to start slow, like maybe two milligrams maybe, and wait maybe two hours. Um, or if you're smoking it, um, I, I actually don't uh, recommend smoking, I actually recommend vaping it, because that's a, a safer thing to do. Because anytime you combust or burn any plant material, you generate cancer-causing materials and carbon monoxide. So the safest way to consume it through your lungs is to vape it. Like, she tried two different type of vape apparatus uh, on this film. Um, the first person that needs to be careful are someone with heart disease, coronary arteries, artery disease, atherosclerosis. If you are symptomatic with regular day-to-day -day living activities, you probably should not try cannabis. So I'm not saying that if, if you're well controlled and you can function without being short of breath or having chest pain, you can probably try it. But if you're symptomatic with daily activities of living, you should not try it. There was recently a person who had a heart, they said, r they wrote it up in the cardiology journal. Man sucks on a lollipop with cannabis and has a heart attack. Cannabis does not cause heart attacks. What it does is it dilates your blood vessels, makes your blood pressure drop, and therefore your body wants to keep your blood pressure up and so it makes your heart race faster. If you have poorly controlled angina, that's gonna put, that may precipitate a heart attack, especially if you, because he had a lollipop that, that I heard it was 90 milligrams <laughs> of THC. Wow. Uh, that's a lot, you know. <laughs> The, a, hel a, a healthy person will maybe do five or 10 milligrams to give you a reference, uh, uh, but 90 milligram lollipop. And so he was, he was not only was, was his heart racing, he was having you know, hallucinations and paranoia and all those things. And, and that's what I believe freaked him out and caused a heart attack. Because if you're stressed and you have heart disease, you, you can have a heart attack just from being stressed. From having sex, you can have a heart attack if you, you're not in shape. <laughs> So that's the one person. Um, the second person, if you have um, depression and you're on a tricyclic um, antidepressant, one of, one of the side effects to my understanding is a tachycardia can happen with that. And if you're on that, it's better to wean yourself off of that before you try cannabis. The third person would be a, a person with a strong family history of psychosis. I mean, if every other relative is schizophrenic or paranoid or something like that, y you might not want to try it. Um, now, I will say that a small amount of, of TAC can be sedating and make you feel okay, but the other side of that curve, way too much, can make you paranoid, make you see things, hear things. So, like any medication, there's a right dose for it, and there's a wrong dose for it. If you take too much, you could die. Right. <laughs> but, you, you know, you won't die with cannabis, but you may have a very bad time for about 24 hours. Um, <laughs> but you won't, you won't die. You, right. <laughs> exactly. So, Did so. anybody, when they looked at the movie and then when Wendy started taking, she was eating an edible, then she was smoking? I was like, honey, I mean, like, that wasn't starting small. That was <laughs> it's like, dang. And I was like, they're, they're messing with her. They were messing with her. <laughs> Here, vape this, eat this. Why don't you <laughs> smoke this? Why don't you, you know, do. Yeah, I'm just kidding. But I was just like, oh, okay, she went from zero to 60 really fast. Okay. We're